In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Hurricane Barrel that is unfortunately uh, tracking directly towards Jam Jamaica there. We see that it is impacting areas of southern Haiti and Dominican Republic as well. And chances are increasing, as we alluded to yesterday, that a Texas impact is uh, basically becoming more and more likely every single model run at this point. So we're going to track all of these things, including the upcoming pattern for the continental United States, the lower 48 states. We will be going over a little bit of the upcoming pattern because I realize that we haven't talked about it in a few days. So we're going to dive into that as well towards the end of this video. Let's take a look at things. We still have a major, major hurricane barrel here, and it is barreling towards Jamaica, unfortunately, as I mentioned. We see a nice twirl. Uh, that eye has become a lot smaller and tighter, which could indicate some quicker winds there right in the center. Uh, obviously, as these storms get very, very strong, that very, very small, tight circle there in the center is, is kind of a bad sign at points, especially when we still have these very tall clouds and a very evident, quick swirl happening there in the middle. Look at that. I mean, that is an aggressive, aggressive swirl in the center uh, as it's so small, as we've mentioned just not a good look. We even see some pinks showing up now in there. We were seeing a lot of blacks and whites obviously around, but now the pinks beginning to show up indicating even taller clouds within that eye wall and even some of these surrounding thunderstorms on the outside of this storm hitting uh, Dominican Republic and a little bit later on probably Haiti. Uh, not a good look there in the Caribbean. Now the two-day graphical tropical weather outlook overall, we do have some good news. Uh, a lot of these clouds in our MDR or main development region have died down quite a bit, including our potential tropical cyclone here, which is all the way down to a 10% chance over the next 24 hours. And over the next seven days, as you can see, only a 20% chance of development as we were all the way, I think as high as a 70 or 80% chance a couple days ago, it came back down to about a 50% chance yesterday. And now we're all the way back down to a 20% chance. Now we're not out of the waters yet, no pun intended. However, uh, this is a really, really good sign that we will not see uh, anything develop out of this one, hopefully in our Southern Caribbean area, the area that has just been ravaged by this hurricane barrel already. With all that being said, let's take a look at the cone forecast for our major hurricane barrel. And as you can see, we still have 150 mile per hour winds there. This storm got to a category five. Uh, so the highest level you can possibly get uh, just last night. Very unfortunate stuff. Again, not even very common in early August. Usually you wait until mid to late August for these types of things, major hurricanes, uh, even really to see much in the way of hurricane development on, on most years. Uh, however, this year is unlike any other, and we've been talking about this for so many months. In the month of June, we saw this one get all the way up to a Category 4. Uh, and in the month of very early July, the first two days, we saw this get up to a Category 5, making it the earliest Category 5 on record. A lot of you were quick to point out in yesterday's video that, you know, I said this is uh, had, this has never happened before. A lot of you were like, well, you know, there's been so many years, you know, before recorded history. Obviously, I was alluding to recorded history. Nobody has any idea what, what happened, you know, you know, 500 plus years ago in the tropics, of course. But with that all being said, in recorded history, this has definitely never happened before. It's the earliest Category 5 hurricane ever, and, you know, that would likely mean that this is going to be a terrible hurricane season. And I think that goes without saying that's quite obvious, but this could be the worst of all time, which I think it definitely is in the contention for with the current uh, data that we're getting out of the entire Atlantic Ocean, uh, both for the Caribbean main development region and even in the Gulf of Mexico and off the Southeast. We have record-breaking warmth in those areas, and that has really helped and aided in the development of this major hurricane, unprecedented hurricane, really. Uh, and I expect a lot more uh, records and, and historical things to happen, unfortunately, this hurricane season. As you can see, we expect a major hurricane to landfall in Jamaica by 2 p.m. tomorrow on Wednesday. Uh, that should make a direct landfall on the southeastern coast there. It could basically go just slightly south of the island, which wouldn't really uh, be much better than a direct hit. Uh, if anything, they might get more of the northern eye wall if it heads a little bit further south. So uh, no real good news can come of this unless it's far outside of the cone at this point. Uh, everybody that is in Jamaica, if anybody is watching this video, uh, really, this is a serious storm, uh, unlike anything that we've seen this early on. 
and uh, this is going to be a dangerous one. So please heed every watch, warning, and advisory, and do what you can to keep you and your family safe. Now, afterwards, for 2 a.m. on Thursday, we do see this weaken back down to a Category 2 or below, as according to the National Hurricane Center, uh, indicated by the H there, so it's no longer a major hurricane. And it will strike the Yucatan Peninsula as a hurricane there where we do have hurricane watches up in the pink, as well as tropical storm watches up there for the coast of Belize in the uh, yellow there. Uh, we do expect it to kind of take a little bit of a northern curve. This cone currently is calling for a very far northern coast of Mexico impact, although a lot of the models are calling for a southern Texas impact. We will look at that in just a little bit. This track could even uh, deviate a little bit from this as there is still a chance of a lesser uh, Yucatan Peninsula hit, which would really help it to retain some of that energy. As we take a look at the spaghetti model guidance here, as you can see, uh, the consensus here is along the lines of what we're seeing from the National Hurricane Center. We see it hit somewhere south of Cancun, Mexico on the Yucatan Peninsula. But we do see a lot of them deviating and, and getting a very northward curve here, uh, even as far north as the northern coast of Texas being a potential impact zone. Uh, the mean average, I'd say, is in the center there of the southern Texas coast. And then we do have quite a bit here showing a northern Mexico hit as well. But every single model run, we have seen these trend further and further northward. And if you did watch yesterday's video, you would know that this is quite a quite a click northward from yesterday's model guidance. So uh, we do suspect potential ticks in perhaps the northern direction or southern direction from these models. Uh, so definitely something to keep your eye on. The intensity guidance is looking a little bit more concerning as there is a growing number of models that are now calling for this storm to kind of try to remain in a category one status, even some rebounding it up to category two or three, which would be highly unfortunate, obviously, as it is about to impact either Mexico or Texas by that point. Uh, you don't want to see this. Obviously, the best case scenario is a weakening down to tropical storm or even below status here, which some models do indicate, but there is a larger and ever growing uh, group of models that are keeping this storm stronger and stronger through time. So something to definitely track moving forward. Obviously, as we get closer and closer to the potential impact of this system in the United States, we will show a lot more guidance as far as rainfall, storm surge, things of that nature for our friends down there in Texas. Something that we're going to be putting out uh, very soon if this storm continues to be a threat for those areas. Now, Obviously, with all that being said, we do expect a lot of activity in the east, actually, over the next 10 days as well, outside of this storm. Starting from the plains and you take it eastward, look at how dry things are out west. Nearly no precipitation for your western states at all, and even for the Rockies here. Very minimal, looking at under an inch of precipitation for most of these areas. And you really have to go to the plains eastward to get even an inch plus. But most of these areas in the reds are at 2 to 5 inches, so there is a huge contrast from west to east in the activity which is quite common for the summertime as is. As we just roll through the model run, the actual model run here, we do see that there is some eastern storms on the way. We do get a stronger uh, low. I, I wouldn't say that. Maybe 1,004, so a weaker low overall. For the summertime, it's pretty decent. We do get some potential severe weather activity underneath as there is a bit of a cold front for Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, uh, Kentucky, Indiana, Ohio, uh, Illinois as well, and even impacting areas along, around the Appalachian Mountain Range as well by Friday on the 5th. As we continue on to Saturday the 6th, we see that a lot of this activity does reach the Gulf and East Coasts there. As we keep going, we get another round of storms moving through, again with a Midwest low, kind of weaker here between Iowa and Illinois. And we get another kind of uh, cold front out ahead of things, so another round of potential uh, severe weather here for the Southern Plains some of the Ohio Valley and deeper south here as well. Let's keep going and we get another uh, round of it kind of on the way, a little bit weaker this time around, but there is a pocket along this area trying to move from west to east by time we're looking at about Friday the 12th. So I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a sneak peek into the upcoming pattern. I know Barrel has been front and center, obviously, on these videos for multiple days now, but I wanted to roll through the upcoming pattern with you guys so that you aren't totally in the dark with what to expect for a lot of the lower 48. And for those of you who knew, you know, I'm trying to think of a state like Minnesota and North Dakota, you know, there is probably no impacts from any tropical activity. So I understand that you guys want to get some weather information as well, where the tropics just don't even pertain to your area whatsoever. So I wanted to be sure to get some of this out to you guys as well. 
Anyway, be sure to subscribe. We do upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.